Welcome to the Up Level Dairy Podcast. This is the podcast for dairy owners, managers, and their trusted advisors who are looking to take themselves and their businesses to their next level of performance, resilience, and success in the dairy farming business. I'm your host, Peggy Coffeen, and it's my mission to bring you the stories and thought leaders to help take you to your next up level. For the past six months, you've been listening to conversations with incredible dairy farm owners and managers who are finding ways to lower turnover, empower their people, and achieve their goals. And in this episode, I'm doing you a favor. I am pulling together the insights, the themes that keep coming up over and over again, the commonalities of great managers, because ultimately a great manager is a great leader performing at a high level. This isn't about the cows. This is all about people. And in this episode of the High Performance Mindset Series powered by NEDAP, you are going to walk away with the five habits of high-performing dairy farm managers. NEDAP is future-proofing dairy farms by revolutionizing cow side care through technologies and activity monitoring, cow locating, milk metering, and identification. Listen for more episodes in this series throughout 2023. And so what are these five habits? habits. Well, the first one I identified is this communication. In episode five, Omar Guerrero, manager and partner at Drake Dairy in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, said it so simply. Communication is the key to the success in any any place. You know, you don't got good communication. That means communication is communicate every single one in the dairy. So what does good communication look like? Jared Dupengeiser from Milk Sources Rosendale Dairy describes the daily actions for his team of 50 employees in episode eight. We really, every day we, we have conversations with every single one of our employees. And it's not a half an hour conversation with each employee, but that little conversation that we have every single day, um, whether it's about work-related topics so that they can continue to grow and do a better job in their role here or um, topics outside of the workplace, uh, home, family, just to get on a more personal level and know our employees better. Let's go to New York to Sunnyside Farms, where Jared Yowsey manages the 5,000 cow dairy. I had invited Jared to share his one word for 2023 on episode seven, and it all came back to communication for him too. Jared has built his high performing team by spending one on one time with his employees, working side by side, and his goal was to express gratitude and help his team rise to new opportunities. This is what he had to say. One of my goals, I guess, to, to make this happen happen is um, to continue to engage um, one-on-one, two-on-two with our staff um, that we really put a focus on the last two or three years, uh, got away from big meetings with COVID. And you know, it's, it's a lot more powerful for that shoulder time uh, to build those relationships, to show you care, to train people, to just have conversations on what's going on in their lives. Um, that's where that's where I think we're really going to gain even more connection is continuing to do that, continuing to focus on that going forward. And in episode 30, Sonia Koch from Blue Bonnet and Blue Jay Dairies in Dublin, Texas, also emphasizes the power of constant communication to support their managers daily. And their managers then do the same for their team members. Not only do you need your one hour team meeting, but you also need a stand up meeting. So you actually go find that manager. And spend five, at least five minutes with them and asking them, how's things, how's your family? How's, how's things going? What's going on here? You know, give them some time to respond back to you. So they will actually tell you what's going on and not be like, yeah, it's all good. Because it's not always good. We all know. Yeah. Yeah. And so do you do that, you know, to try to do that once a week or like, what's your frequency that you try to do those, those check-in, those standing check-ins? Those standing check-ins, it's probably going to be almost... Probably five days a week. Five days a week. Yeah. Yeah. So constant communication. Yeah. So, I mean, like I'll go to the calf ranch and I'll not go in there to like run it, but I want to check in on my manager. How are you doing? How was the weekend? You had a day off yesterday. You know, how'd it go? What'd you do? You know, and then what, you know, what do you see is going on here? You know, on a personal level more. And then, and what are you, 
you know, what do you hope to accomplish this week or whatever, you know, but it's five minutes. But if they need more, they'll let you know. And then you're like, okay, well, let me look at my calendar. When can we sit down and actually conquer this problem and talk about it more in depth? These one-on-one conversations are key, as Omar, Jared, and Sonia shared, but there's more. On episode 18, Christine Bender at McFarlandale Dairy in Watertown, Wisconsin, talked about establishing team meetings to communicate goals and to achieve those goals. I think once you set a goal and you write it down and you communicate it to your team and then you give them ways to work towards it, it's amazing how easy it is to then achieve that. And everybody has the buy-in and commitment to reaching those goals and then getting the reward. Like we're within 10, well, we're within 13 points of our SMAC Cellcom goal for this year already within the first, you know, two months. So everybody's really excited. So communication is the first habit of high-performing dairy farm managers. Another theme that kept coming up in our conversations was this, trust. You know, I believe it was a podcast I was listening to from Craig Rochelle where he said this, there's only one way to know if you can trust people to trust them. And that's the discipline that these great managers are mastering, the ability to empower their leaders on their team by allowing them to make decisions and establishing a chain of command where they are not the only ones that are receiving all the phone calls and putting out all the fires. As Sonia Koch shared in episode 30, that can be easier said than done, but it's essential and was a critical point for their ability to optimize their time and their teams at their dairies. Because we were used to like, oh, they have a problem. Um, you know, that crew has a milk, that crew, that person and that crew from that milking has a problem. And they came to us and we kind of tried to work it through, with, you know. But now it was like, okay, I need to talk to the herdsman that talks to the milk lead that will then bring them together. And if that milk lead can't do it, then he brings it back to the herdsman. And if it really goes all south, that's when we come in place. Okay. So it's like a chain of command that yeah. everybody just knows is in place. Yes, now, but that was a change and it was hard for the guys because they always were used to calling us, you know, finding us. And so that was a new thing for us to like, do not overstep the manager. Like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know, and that was something And Bruce told us too, that was going to be a hard part. And it was, it was really hard because you want to fix it right then and there and sidestep the manager because you can do it. But then that respect and that understanding that it needs to go this way is how it needs to be. That was probably really hard. Now, going back to Omar at Drake Dairy, I had asked him one time, how often does your phone ring with emergencies at the dairy? And he said, hardly ever. He too credits this to trusting his team leaders and building that trust by putting decisions in their court. In the beginning, you know, when I started these guys working and they call me and I say, okay, I said, we went through all the training and you know what to do I say. The, I, you know, I could advise it, advice, give you advice, but you gotta, you gotta make decision. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, they start taking ownership. I also oversee. I mean, but they take ownership and. Uh, they really like it when I say you make the decision. Scott Blevins, who has been the manager at Wheezy Brothers Farms in Wisconsin, overseeing 7,000 cows plus all the young stock, also knows that is part of being a high-performing manager. Building a good team means building trust, and that's why he expects mistakes. And if employees make the wrong decision, he helps them to fail fast, learn, and move on. He shared about this in episode four. When people make mistakes, um, uh, which are expected, you don't crucify them. You help them learn from it. And then hopefully they do learn from it. And then if they don't learn from it, then then you deal with them. Yeah. Yeah. But you give everybody that opportunity, absolutely, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And then we make sure that those people are in those, uh, when you're dealing with, I don't care, with in any level from sports to to uh, corporations, to farms, if you're uh, meeting a group of people, expect mistakes. And Mm. mistakes are gonna happen. But how you relate those mistakes to that person and what they get out of it, essentially what they learn from it, helps you be better. So like a guy that's, say, on the feed truck and he runs through a a door, you know, and he's been been out there working with you for uh, many years. If you take that guy out and then you put a new guy in, expect about three more doors to get it. Yeah. So, 
So <laughs> I'd rather him learn from that one door. Yeah. And whether a charge may can pay for it or whether however we come to a uh, solution to move on from it, from that problem. And the solution would be that he learned from it. Then I'm good. So we've identified communication and trust. And the next habit that many of these high-performing managers have in common is this. They show appreciation. Brett Barless was the manager at Yosemite Jerseys in Hillmark, California, before joining California Dairy Farms. During his days at Yosemite, he went a stretch of nine years without a single no-call, no-show employee. How did he do it? Well, of the many things combined, he identified this as one of the keys in episode 20. And when people do things right, you need to highlight that more than when they do things wrong. I send, I send text all the time to all the team members, to everyone, even Melkers. When I see Melkers, like we have a uh, blue cream, like chap, like it's like chapstick for people, but if cows have teat, chap teats, they have blue, blue cream. And if I'm out walking cows and I see cows that have that blue cream on their, on their teats, I'll snap a picture and I'll send it to the whole milking team and I'll do like the praying hands and I'll specifically call out the person that was attaching machines that put that blue cream on. You know, so acknowledge people when they do good things. Do it more than when you do it more than criticism. And here's another dairy manager who has experienced extremely low turnover, Jared Dupengeiser. And he backs this statement up in episode one as well. You really have to know your people. Um, people stay because appreciation matters and they recognize that and they see that. Um, and... I think the other thing too is like with the appreciation and praise, um, when we reach goals, we acknowledge that and we give, we give, we celebrate that success. Um, and I think that's huge because the guys, um, and girls, they hear, they, we, we don't want to like put these goals in front of them and they reach them and then, Oh, we've got another goal. So when we reach that, when we reach that goal, we celebrate that success that they did with them. And I think that's been huge, huge, huge part of it. So Jared said something else really powerful back in episode one that exemplifies the fourth habit of high-performing dairy farm managers. They consciously, consistently cultivate their culture. Hear his vision for the culture at Rosendale Dairy. For me, I really just want it to be... Um, an atmosphere where people are encouraged to excel and excited to give their best every day. Um, I really want all of my, all the employees um, to see it as an opportunity for growth and not just growth um, and in their work here and their career here, but I want them to be able to um, take what they learn here and um, through our culture, have a better personal growth, whether it's with their family, um, whether it's down the road, if they're doing something else and another career, I want, I want us to have a really big impact on, on every single employee as much as we can um, to better all of their, their future. In a similar way, Michelle Chambeau, Human Resources Manager at Ebert Enterprises in Algoma, Wisconsin, emphasizes the importance of creating a vision for that culture that you want to bring into your dairy in episode 15. So number one, I would say from an owner standpoint, determine that vision or what your culture you want that to look like for your employees. Um, then I would say number two would be you as the HR manager determining certain goals. So what do you want to do from like an orientation and onboarding standpoint, from a recruitment standpoint, evaluations, development, um, compliance, all of that, workman's cup, safety, like you kind of have a vision of what you want to do and where you want to go. But then step three, I would say kind of making that bite size and step by step, because I have a vision of like, well, I wanted it to look just like this, but if you have never had HR in your company before, you kind of got to get buy-in before you can get from zero yeah. to 60. That vision for culture extends beyond the dairy. When Sandy Larson, general manager at Larson Acres in Wisconsin, jumped on with us for episode 28 to share her tips for managing employee housing, she also explained how bringing that culture into the homes of the employees has helped them to achieve an entirely new level of success as a dairy. The culture at the farm and the, um, the 
cow care and the somatic cell count and the milk production and I mean that's on sand, you know, sand um, recycling. It's all it's all clicking, you know, it's all working well. So it's just it all it's all tied in together to having a good work environment to a good home. Uh, the appreciation they have for the job that they have. So they're, they work really hard um, to do a good job. We've actually done a lot of promotion from within to uh, you know, management level jobs la- and over the last year, which has been so much fun to see. You don't get that a lot. You know, if you don't have a lot of change or a lot of turnover, there's not a lot of opportunity. But we've had that a little bit in the last year. Um, so that's been fun to watch them grow and, and learn new skills. Um, I think it's it's all tied together. And of course, culture is leadership from the top down. Jamie and Ellie St. Pierre from Pleasant Valley Farms in Vermont shared this on episode 11. I think a great thing my dad has instilled on the farm is whenever we have visitors on the farm or a consultant on the farm or a meeting with employees or team members, uh, he would say, we, we have one rule. We want three things we can do better by the time you leave the farm. I'm working or any meeting. What, are, what what do you all think we can do better on the farm? And try to frame it like that. So we're always have a culture on the farm that there's, we're going to make changes. We're going to try to always be better at what we're doing. Communication, trust, appreciation, consciously cultivating culture. These are four habits of high-performing dairy farm managers. And so you might be wondering, what is number five? Well, if you listen to the Up Level podcast, you know that there are five questions I ask at the end of each episode. And one of them is this. In three words, how do you want to show up each day? Well, this reveals number five. They know exactly how they want to show up each day and they do it. Here's how 23-year-old dairyman from Wyoming, Reese Burnett, answered that question in episode 22. I want to show up confident, humble, and eager. Confident enough to push myself to be better, but humble enough to know my own weaknesses and uh, eager to learn and better myself every day. Humble was one of Jared Dupengeiser's words too. I'd say for me, that's, um, that's pretty easy. It's kind of what I tried to... Um, live by here at, at the farm and also at home is humble, hungry, and smart. And I want to expand upon that just briefly. Um, obviously, obviously humble, um, just admitting to mistakes, um, and, and with hungry, um, always eager to learn more, to challenge myself, to grow more, um, but then the smart one is, is a little bit confusing because it's not intellectually smart. It's people smart. Um, and that I, I, we've talked about a lot, but it's really, really, um, it's a core value of mine of, of just being people smart, not just with employees, but being people smart with, with my wife and <laughs> with my family and building those relationships. So Humble, hungry, and smart is, um, and I got that from from a book called The Ideal Team Player that I read. So that's um, those are definitely the three that that come to mind. For Omar, it's showing up with positive energy every single day, no days off. One of the things, like in our culture, Hispanic culture, is really important. Uh, you know, the good morning, good afternoon, hi, bye, or all this stuff. So. Everybody's got a, you know, good morning, good morning. How you doing? Uh, you know, the simple, simple thing, you know, is just greeting everybody. Good morning. And good morning, team, or, you know, these guys are just coming with a positive attitude because uh, you guys, you start with, I mean, not everybody deals with the problems the same, but one of these guys that I pick up uh, via leaders is because I know they can handle that. You know, not all the people, you know, you have problems, you deal different with your problems, but these guys, they understand how important it is to come with a positive attitude to work. And that's how they go transmit to their team. And that's going to put in a good mood to, um, you know, work that many hours in here at the farm. Yeah. So it's really, really important to create a culture that, you know, positive uh, energy always. In episode seven, Jessica Prowley Trimner from Miltron Farms in Athens, Wisconsin, owns the energy she wants to bring to her team as a manager and leader, even though some days it's hard. Even on the bad days, which are seem to be 
not bad days, but the the trying days. I need to show up, be energized, be positive, and and reassure my team so that way they feel confident when they come to work. They know that they've always got someone in their corner when things are hard as well. And then just supporting them too, because they have a seat at the table. They have ideas. Uh, we've got a lot of very tenured people. So um, they've they've seen the path of the dairy and they are the future of the dairy too, because we, even though at some point they may move on, um, we want them to be successful in this industry. So I'm you know, just going to show up every day and try to inspire my team to um, keep getting better and surround us with uh, really good um, advisors and, and just keep, keep teaching and, and try to share more things too. And, and, and just be the voice uh, for the dairy and the outside team. So that way they always know what's going on in and out of the farm daily. Cause right now I think that just helps pull everyone in and get that uh, unity and common goals together. And sometimes it can be really tough to show up with positive energy. In his 17 years as a dairy manager, Scott Blevins has learned to lean on his faith and develop his mental strength to keep showing up and leading his team. Everyone's happy and everyone's part of the game when you're winning. When you're losing, uh, it's a pretty lonely job. And uh, I think that um, anyone's good when things are good. It's how good you are when things are tough. That's really where I think uh, makes you stand out as a leader and uh, as a person that is uh, based on uh, results and you're driven by that. I think that that is uh, a very good way to, to look at it and that's the way I've always looked at it. Five habits of high-performing dairy farm managers. They communicate, they trust, they show appreciation, they constantly consciously cultivate culture, and at the end of the day, they own their role and how they lead themselves. And they know the word manager is just a title. Their job is so much more, as Brett Barless had shared in episode 20. Some days I'm a banker. Some days I'm a marriage counselor. Some days I, you know, I go, I'll go help milk cows or whatever. You know, in reality, in reality, I believe everyone's job as a manager should be to be supportive of whatever the rest of the team needs, whatever that role is. It isn't just about the cows. High-performing managers take care of the people who take care of the cows. And I'm going to let Jared Yowsey from Sunnyside Farms sum this up best with what he shared back in episode seven, when he talked about his one word or actually two words for 2023, gratitude and opportunity. I think it all starts with gratitude, but that provides the pathway to opportunity um, for everyone. Once you appreciate others and you're really invested in the success success of people. Um, at the end of the day, 65 people are what make our business work and profitable and give us social lives and not work seven days a week and uh, go home to see our families every night and do those things. So, um, and then opportunity financially for the business to keep milking more cows and to make more milk per cow and to buy new equipment and buy new land and all of those things that make us as dairy farmers, which comes second to people, um, our passion, right? So thank you for joining us for this episode of the high performance mindset series powered by NEDAP. NEDAP is future proofing dairy farms by revolutionizing cow side care through technologies and activity monitoring, cow locating, milk metering, and identification. Listen for more episodes in this series in 2023. Joining us today from NEDAP is Tara Baker, North American Marketing Manager, and she is joining us to tell us about a really fun contest that NEDAP is hosting during June and July this year. Tara, tell us about what you have going on. Hey, Peggy. Thanks for having me. NEDAP is launching the hashtag Farm Proof campaign for the months of June and July. So we are um, recognizing the importance of creating and supplying products and systems to the farm that can last the, the rugged environment year round that happens in a dairy farm. And we are asking farmers to challenge the products they have by making a fun video, uploading it and uh, letting everybody like and vote for who should be the winner. 
All right. So the contest is called Farm Proof. Hashtag Farm Proof. Find it and follow it through NEDAP. And really, if I hear you right, Tara, what you're saying is you're encouraging dairy farmers, uh, their their family members, people working on the dairy to find any product that they're handling on a daily basis and put it up to the challenge. And so what does that look like? Are you talking about like blowing stuff up, lighting it on fire, <laughs> running it over with a tractor? Am I hearing you right? Well, Peggy, you are going to the extremes, but certainly put them to the test. Let's see what comes in. Um, so at NEDAP, we know that product on dairies need to take an impact to make an impact. And so the idea for this really started because our activity monitoring tags can withstand so much. And our customers were challenging them just for fun and sending us videos and saying, look at this thing made it through the manure separator. This thing got ran over by the TMR mixer or whatever, and it still works great. And so it really just kind of started because this was happening in the countryside anyways. And we said, well, hey, let's make it a challenge and elevate these stories and let everybody have fun with it. Oh, so this sounds like something a lot of our listeners could have a ton of fun with. And okay, so you make a video, you upload it, and then can you win something? Of course. So everybody that submits a video, uh, we want to thank them for that submission. And so we will send them a really cool farm proof t-shirt. Um, and then for the grand prize winner who receives the most likes and votes online, we will give them a $250 grand prize Visa gift card. All right. So make the video, submit it, and you are guaranteed to get a t-shirt in the running for a $250 gift card. And when do people have to have these videos submitted by? So we're running it for June and July. So uh, just as long as you get them in during that time, you should be good. And really, this isn't hard, guys. Like, just go out with your smartphone, take a fun video, and click upload on our social media link. Like, we're not asking for a lot of uh, background details or anything like that. So that means you don't have to release the names of anyone involved in these videos. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Just in case they get a little wild and crazy. And, yep. uh, and Tara, how can our listeners find and follow NEDAP and hashtag farm proof? We are on all of the major social platforms, NEDAP Dairy Farming, NEDAP Livestock Management. So find us, follow us, interact with us and post your video. So, as simple as that. Excellent. All right. So get out there, friends, and go ahead and show how hashtag farm proof the things that you're using every day on your dairy are. Thanks for joining us, Tara. Thanks for having me, Peggy. Thank you for listening to the Up Level Dairy Podcast. I'm your host, Peggy Coffeen. And if you like what you heard today, go ahead and head on over to upleveldairy.com to read the blog and join the Up Level Dairy email list so you can receive new podcast blogs and special offers coming soon from Up Level Dairy straight in your inbox. To listen to more episodes, head over to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube, and don't forget to rate and review. Connect with me, Peggy, at Peggy at UpLevelDairy.com, and follow Up Level Dairy on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn.